Does, does, does this order of five and looking at it side by side, the local content policy of the government, does it address in the oil and gas sector the notion that we still do not know how much crude is lifted out of this country because the experts who go down there to take the readings are not Nigerians. And so we have to make do with what we're given. I think that is not true. Um, I mean, from my experience in the oil sector for the past 25 years, it's not the experts that go take the readings. At every export terminal, you have various government agencies, DPRO, uh, uh, customs, immigration, everybody is there. And it is the director of petroleum resources guy who gives the final approval of what leaves the terminal. So I think it's an erroneous notion. And these days, you don't even need to go anywhere. Things are digitalized. You can still be in their control room and you see the quantity that is being loaded and what is being exported. So I don't think that is true. Uh, uh, Gimba. So looking at that side by side, ICT, because this is meant to also have ICT develop uh, very fast, rapidly in Nigeria, and looking at uh, indigenous companies to take first, to be considered first, as, is it, in the, as it, it is in America, America comes first. In Nigeria too, we're looking at that kind of situation. Nigerian companies should come first. Do you think that Nigerian companies, with the recent uh, developments in the recent past, as a matter of fact, looking at how they have fared well, because you have this policy that allows you to have a partnership with foreign companies first before you are able, uh, able to, to carry out some very mundane things as government uh, contracts. How much of that will change considering this new Order 5? Okay, uh, the Order 5 is specifically addressing expatriate quota, uh, but in, in the Local Content Act itself, um, there are provisions that says Nigerians should be given first right of refusal in certain categories of work, which we have monitored and we have implemented over the couple of years. Um, in terms of uh, 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 implementation of local content, we must understand that no country is an island and no country has all the technological know-how uh, to implement uh, 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 things. and then. Local content development itself is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It takes time mm -hmm. to build the capacity to overtly take over. So you must create an avenue for partnerships where you can help to transfer technology. You can also help to bring funding because in most of the projects, uh, as, as a Nigerian contractor, you probably want to hedge your risk by creating partnerships with other international companies so that you can bring in funding. But this executive order itself, uh, just to repeat myself perhaps, is to address the expatriate quota bit. There are others that are needed to address this other point you have raised, which is contained in the Local Content Act. I have advocated that we need to expand the Local Content Act beyond the oil and gas sector. And I believe that the orders, executive orders that we are seeing is a Picasso to that happening mm. because <coughs> In the oil and gas sector, when we had it as a policy, it was implemented on a best endeavor basis. But when it became law, we had teeth to bite. Hence, people were forced to behave differently. Companies were forced to behave differently because if you don't, there are penalties contained in the act that will come you know, after you. There's still, the, the jury is still out there on that part of people forced to behave as they should, because there's that, uh, there's that talk about casualization of workers, that's on one side. But I wanted to ask you a question. I want to ask a question about uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the local content law. It's been, it's been implemented for about seven years now. Is it possible for us to build some of this infrastructure that we would most often import from the scratch now in Nigeria with Nigerians building it from scratch to finish? Oh yeah, we, we, I mean, if you take a record of what we have achieved in, in that sector uh, over the years, uh, you discover that Nigerians have built a lot of kits. Uh, yesterday I had the opportunity of uh, uh, visiting the Egina FPSO project by Total that has just arrived. And, and I was glad, I was there with the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, I was glad to see components, significant components, that were built by Nigerians 
that is on that uh, vessel. So once you challenge Nigerians and you create the enabling environment and you create <clears throat> laws that can protect their investment and ingenuity, I tell you they are able to achieve whatever challenge you put before them. I mean, when we started, all fabrication in the oil and gas sector were done by experts, and most of them were imported into the country. All what happened here used to be installation. But today, we've moved the needle significantly in the sense that major components within those very challenging technical uh, uh, contracts are being done by Nigerians. In the Agena project, for instance, we fabricated 60,000 metric tons in this country to participate in that project. Uh, but Before if I could now, jump in there, yeah. why is it then that people say <coughs> that, that is not a, a true reflection of a local content because of the ICT components that was implemented by uh, a foreign company? Indeed. Um, we, the, the ICT components, uh, even within the Agena project, the bulk of it was done by Nigerians. Believe it or not, some of the ICT components were assembled here and exported to Korea for installation within that vessel. But again, um, ICT... So it couldn't have been installed here? Sorry? They couldn't have been installed here? No, because the hall for that Agena FPSO was in Korea. That was where they fabricated the hall and assembled some of the components. But you needed to, because it's a condition precedent, you need to install some of those components before you bring others onto it. So it was required to be exported there for them to install. But don't forget, the ICT component within the oil and gas sector is also limited in its sense. That's why the advocacy that you must have this law go beyond the oil and gas sector, such that you harness the full benefit of ICT in every sector of the economy.